If you're a huge DIY person like me, then you know that having one pair of ears for Disney is never enough. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys a foolproof method on how to easily 3D print and create your own pair of ears for your trip. Hello YouTube, my name is Brandon Red, and if you've never been to this channel, this is Ramen Noodle Budgets where we try to make things as cheap as we possibly can. So in today's video, I decided that I finally had to make a tutorial, I just realized I'm wearing these backwards, how to make a tutorial on how to do a pair of 3D printed Disney Mickey ears. I just got back from my sixth trip, and this is the trip that finally got me sick somehow. Um, while on this trip, I had those three set of ears that you saw in the intro, and uh, these were the ones that everyone was raving about. Um, I had people asking where I bought them. I had a manager at uh, uh, the Polynesian ask me if I bought them there and where I got them. Um, I told everyone that I made them and then I had people asking, including cast members, if I could make them for them. And then even during um, one of the parades, someone screamed out that they love my ears who was actually working the parade. So that was a huge thing for me. Um, and the crazy thing is I made these ears a few days in advance and the concept didn't even come to me until a few days before I actually made them. So about a week out, I decided to make these ears. So um, I didn't know 3D printing ears was even a thing. I was gonna make these completely like from scratch because I saw an awesome TQ Room video, uh, Tiki Broom ears video that I was gonna make. But then I decided why not just 3D print them? They could be easily, I can easily do it. Now I've been 3D printing for years, but in this video I'm gonna make this as basic as I possibly can. Like if you know absolutely nothing about 3D printing, I'm gonna try and explain everything that I can to you. Uh, 3D printers, FDM, which is plastic fused deposition modeling, which builds up the layers. Um, not to be confused with SLA, which is like resin, that's very expensive. Um, they're accessible almost to everyone now. Libraries have them, almost every school I've been to has one. Um, they're even extremely cheap for the household. I have two. Um, both only cost me $300 on Amazon. So I'll leave some uh, recommendations if you want to get your own printer down below. If you have a Cricut or a Cricut machine, it's about the same price as a Cricut maker, um, which I want to get for making ears and shirts for Disney and everything. So um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to design, print, and then assemble your ears, including painting and adding things like flowers and how I went about doing that. Um, now, if you've never designed anything before, don't worry, because this is a foolproof method on how to design and um, get your uh, design ready to print. I even have a blank template we're going to start. We're going to be using Tinkercad, which is an online website, so you don't have to download anything. It's 100% free. All you have to do is create an account. I just signed up using Facebook. And then um, basically we're going to work from there. It's so easy, guys. It's like using Microsoft Paint almost. Or is that Microsoft? Yeah, Paint. It's like that easy. It's easier if you use Cricut. It's easier than their whole system because I can't even figure that out yet. So let's jump into my computer and then we will show you how to design your own pair of ears for any attraction that you'd like. So now we are in my computer and the first thing you're going to need to do is to go into the link in the description below and I've uploaded on Thingiverse which is a online kind of sharing 3D file website. I uploaded this blank Disney Mickey ear. Um, it's super basic, it's just kind of like the outer shape that's going to go onto the headband. There's nothing in it. All you have to do is click this download all files. Um, it'll basically just give you a zip file and go into, the, I don't know why it adds all this extra stuff with Thingiverse, you just click on the files and you'll have your ear blank right here. So the next thing you need to do is go on to Tinkercad, which I talked about, and just create a free log or login. You can see I have all these files, I got some Hercules ears, I was working on the orange bird, I even did these Pokemon ones. Really, really cool. And you're going to want to go up to here and click create new design and then it'll load you into the Tinkercad kind of build space which you can use your right the right uh, click to uh, move the whole build plate around you can kind of do all that what you want to do is go to this import in the top right and you're going to choose a file so you're going to take that ear blank that we just downloaded and import that in there and don't mess with any of the settings keep the scale at 100% and import that in there So you should have this now, you have your one ear, and you can upload them both in here, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do one ear at a time. So now that you have your ear all set up and ready to go in the software, um, you feel free to do any of like the basic tutorials if you have no idea how to use it, but I didn't do any of that and I still understand it completely, I just somehow zoomed completely out, there's all these settings over here if you want to zoom and zoom out. So I think the ear I decided I want to do, I was going to do a Donald Duck ear, 
um, because I'm wearing my Donald hoodie, and you know Donald Duck's my favorite character, and I haven't done one yet. But I'm gonna save that for when I actually want to really work on that. And I had this idea for a set of ears um, for the haunted mansion using a 3D printed or uh, a glow in the dark filament, which unfortunately don't have enough glow in the dark to do it. But I'm gonna make the ear design anyway. So Google Images is your best place to go or any place you can get images. And what you're going to want to search, um, do a lot of research, kind of figure out what you want to really put in the ear, have some creativity, look at other people's ears, hell, you can look at even my designs. So I'm going to look up Haunted Mansion, and what you're going to want to look up after that is Silhouette. And there's a reason you want a silhouette and not a crazy, um, colorful, whole multicolored design. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is basically taking something like this. This is little might be a little bit too complex, but you're going to take a design like this, and we're going to create an SVG, which an SVG is just a file that makes it black and white. Literally, it just makes it those two colors. And in Tinkercad, you can actually import SVGs, and it turns it into it turns the blacks from that black and white photo into a 3D. Um, model that we can work with, we can drag, we can make it taller, whatever. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So I think what I want to do is have in one ears have these three hitchhiking ghosts. I think that looked pretty good. So what I'm going to do is, this is a pretty good one, it's not 100% black and white because it looks like it's from uh, some Amazon from a vinyl. What we're going to do is I'm just going to save the image to my computer, I'll save it as hitchhiking ghost. I can even spell, you know, we'll, we'll call it whatever the hell I just typed. And what you're going to want to do is on Google look up um, image to SVG, and there will be a, the first link online SVG image converter. What you're going to do, so I have this file right here, I'm just going to drag it in. We're going to convert that into an SVG file, and it's really, really fast. You'll just have it be the SVG download it and it'll come up as a weird kind of file because SVG is not something your computer reads it kind of reads it as that and look at that it came out as a perfect black and white image I don't even have to worry about cropping anything like I thought I would so the next thing we're gonna do is jump back into Tinkercad click import and it says yeah you can drop a 2d or 3d image file um, you can just choose it from your computer but luckily it's right here so I'm gonna drag it in it says it's limited, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's probably going to try and make it gigantic. So I'm just going to make the scale 20, just so it's not, like, huge. I'm going to import that. So it might take a second. And look at that. So I have a 3D image of the three hitchhiking ghosts, which is really, really awesome. So it's, like I said, this is super easy. You can rotate it. Um, it has, like, you can do really specific increments, or if you go outside the circle, you can kind of do whatever. So we're going to obviously have to make this smaller, and we want to keep it, we don't want to distort the image, so you're going to click a corner and click, um, hold down shift, so that, um, it doesn't, you can't, like, it kind of, it's proportionate when you scale it. So I'm going to scale it to about here, and what I actually think I'm going to do is, I want this to be on the, if you were looking at it front front forward, it would be on the right ear, or if you are wearing it, it would be on the left. So what I'm actually going to do... I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to click on the ear. There's this little guy up here. This is going to flip it. We're just going to flip it to the other way. There we go. So now that's that side. Because they're all kind of pointing in that direction and it kind of fits. So I'm just going to kind of keep scaling them until they look about right. And you do have to remember is that um, when I was first making these ears, I was kind of making them completely kind of flush like that. The issue is you're wearing these ears and uh, I'm trying to like show this without actually looking at the screen. The ears are facing like it's always going to be at an angle so your characters inside the ear have to be straight. So it's going to look kind of wonky when you're designing it but once they're on the ears it's going to make sense. So which these ghosts like I'll show you here they kind of have to be at an angle like this to really look right. And as you can see, there's a lot of empty space there, so there's a few ways we can go about doing this. I think what I'm just going to do is just drag them up a little bit more so I have a few anchor points. Because luckily, um, with this file, they're all touching, which was what I was worried about some of these images. Uh, 
like these ones, they weren't touching. I would have to go in Photoshop or paint and add the extra black lines that they were touching so it would print as one piece so that I wouldn't have floating pieces. Luckily, these were all together, so what I can do is drag them out a little bit more so that they're all touching the sides. Now, here's what you have to do now. So as you can see, the pieces are obviously, this is the intersection that we just made is very... Uh, recessed it's not the same height as the rest of the ear all you do is you're going to click on it and if i kind of get this down here you can see so you have uh these four corners to adjust the size you know on the horizontal scale but we want to do it on like the virtual or the vertical <laughs> 3d scale so you're just going to click that and then you can adjust the actual height of the piece so i'm going to make it so it's just above the actual ear so that the um, this thumb here and then this foot is kind of sticking over it so that, that we don't lose those details. Just like that. Alright, I actually like that a lot. Now we have to make these pieces uh, you know, actually connected. Now these are kind of, the feet are kind of just standing over here and if you really wanted to go in and uh, make this look a little bit nicer you might add like a box or something underneath them, which this system is so easy to use, you could just add, you know, steps beneath them and then cut around it and all that stuff. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna keep it really simple. So what you're gonna do is uh, click the ear itself, and then you wanna click uh, Control, or I think it's Control. Oh, it's actually quite. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the ear, and then you're gonna hold down Shift, and then click on your inner design piece here. And there's this piece on the top that says group. You're going to click that. And then you're going to have your one solid piece. So it's going to be all together now. You can move it around. And I'm fairly happy with how that one came out. So I'm going to click the ear. I'm going to click export. And um, you're going to want to do just the selected shape. And if you have both ears in there, definitely make sure you click that. Not everything in the design. And it says for 3D print, and I recommend saving it as an STL. I just find that it has no problems. And then it's going to save it. For some reason, um, unless you rename it, it names it really weird things in Tinkercast. This one's glorious. My Moo Densor. I don't know why. But there is your 3D file. Now I'm going to try and create another ear really quick. And um, then we can go to actually start printing them. So for the other ear, I actually set on this design. And this is the... Um, the woman who murders all her husbands that's very uh, iconic on the ride so this one i just wanted to show so in the center of the letters it says you know i do i did the blacks are not connected so when you printed this you take the whole thing off the build plate and you know the sections would come out so i'm going to show you how to connect these pieces using just a really simple uh program i'm using photoshop it does not have to be that complicated at all so I just downloaded the image, I'm going to drag it into Photoshop, and I'm going to zoom in here. All I'm going to do, this is really basic, um, you could probably do this a lot cleaner, but this always sort of works out for me. I'm going to build the size up a little bit. That's too big. Bring it back down to about 10, which is probably good. And now we're going to bring it to all black. I'm just going to add some really simple somewhat messy anchor points here so that it's all going to print uh, as one piece and this is really important uh, a lot of people don't realize this when they make 3d designs and models and stuff but it is really important and it really doesn't affect the image that much so if i zoom or fit it back on the screen it's i mean it's obvious but it's not gonna like you wouldn't realize you did that so now i can just kind of Save that file again. And then we can turn it into an SVG and put it in the other ear. So as you can see, I just repeated the same steps. I included another blank ear, and then I did the SVG, and these pieces are now connected. So we're going to quickly make this other ear. This one should be a little bit easier to do. I actually really like this one. And as you can see how quickly, this it's been about 10 minutes, how quickly I just created these two ears. It's insane. And then we're going to bring this up until it's just over. 
And some pieces, I will admit, do look weird when they're dragged up like this, especially this, because there's no contour to it. But front facing, it's really not noticeable. I'm really just gonna make sure that these uh, are all connected at a certain spot. So that's good. I think I might have it too far on one side there, though. Yeah. There we go. All right, I think that's perfect. And then once again, hold down shift, click both of the ears, and then we're going to group them. So both ears now are ready to print. I'm just going to export this one as another STL. So I have both my STLs down here. Now, uh, if you have a 3D printer, great, I'll show you how to do that. If you don't have a 3D printer, um, there's a website like 3D Hubs, which I'm not sure if it's still, I'm pretty sure it's still running. You can get, uh, you can upload your images here or your, your STL files and get a quote and have someone print them for you. Um, there's also, I don't know why the name's not coming to me. Shapeways. You can send your files to Shapeways and have them printed for you in a variety of different materials, including like really cheap, like uh, a PLA, like I'm going to be printing with these ones, or you can print it, you know, in something crazy if you'd like to, but to keep it cheap and everything. But if you have a printer, like I do, and you're all set and ready to go, you're going to want to go into your system, uh, wherever you print. I print in Cura, which is a really, really basic, easy-to-use software. They're currently on 4.0, but I'm still running on whatever, 3. Point whatever. And, um, yeah, so what you're going to want to do is basically, I'm just going to drag these in. So I'm going to go into Cura. You got that file right there. There's that awesome bride ear. And then I'll take our other one. And I may have to adjust these, I'm not sure. Oh, they're both going to fit. Ah, they're both going to fit on the print bed just fine. Alright, so they're both in there, and they're ready to print. Now, printing-wise, I like to print at a layer height of actually 0.3, because um, it basically all prints up vertically here, so it doesn't really matter. If there's no detail on top, it needs to take uh, of any importance, really. And... For infill density, I try and keep it around 15% to keep them light, especially if like this one has so much uh, plastic, it could get really heavy, and you don't want that, especially if one's not as heavy, it could be uh, side heavy, whatever. So, looks like it's only going to be a two hour print, which is super, super quick. So basically I'm going to save this to my, I'm going to click prepare, or I just did, but I'm going to save it to my SD card, and then we're going to go print it on my printer. So to answer a question, I know it's going to come. So what if you can't find a great silhouette of a photo, or you can't find, um, or if you want to, like, take something like this, like this picture of Donald Duck, for example, let's do this one, and you want to do this, I like, you want to make a pair of ears, but, you know, it won't convert right. So if you try and convert a photo like this, and let's say you drop this into your SVG, sometimes it works out. If there's like two colors, if it's like blue and red, it can usually kind of figure that out. But um, a lot of the time it won't, or it'll be too many pieces. So for example, this is the Donald Duck we just uploaded. It's gonna look like that, which looks pretty great, right? But um, like I said, there's all these disconnected pieces. So I just did this. What I'm actually gonna do is drag this back into Photoshop, and it'll let you mess with it usually just as an SVG. Oh, not what I wanted. Redownload that. We'll download or we'll throw our SVG in there. And there's that. So it has the background missing, and you have this awesome uh, just black and Donald. What you can do is just use a fill bucket tool, make sure it's black, and figure out what sections that you want to do all black. Yeah, so sometimes it kind of looks really scary like that, and um, if you want to like fill in certain sections. Another thing you could do is, um, say for example you wanted a multi-tier piece, so you, like with my orange bird one, it's multiple, uh, it's kind of like different layers. Say you wanted to have... Uh, what you do is you paint everything black like this, you put that into Tinkercad as a SVG, and then what you do is 
you keep sections like this black and then you can put that on top and make it a little bit taller if that makes any sense so you have a multi-tiered piece that's if you want to do like complicated pieces um i'm really excited to do my donald deer so eventually i'll get around to doing that and figure out how i want to do it but that's a good method also if you want to do things like that all right so we're here at my 3d printer which unfortunately is very messy right now um and my whole maker space is very messy the awesome thing about 3D printing is the multiple different filaments you can use. There's hundreds of different colors. Um, you can print things like, for my Tiki Room ears, I actually printed in a wood PLA filament. And I stained those and then painted the bird on with some acrylics. So there's some awesome stuff. Uh, you can get ones that glow in the dark, which I would love to use for this sort of ears, but I only have the sample amount, which is nowhere near enough to print both of these ears. But um, I would, that's how I want to originally do these so that when I walk onto the actual ride, they'll glow in the dark and everything. I would be like, what the heck? So for the sake of this one, I'm just going to print it in a black, you probably can't see it, uh, black PLA filament. So I've loaded, this is a Maker Select Plus. You definitely don't need a printer with this big of a print size. You can even get, I think, a lot of the mini, or considered mini printers, you can easily print one year at a time pretty quick. So I loaded my ears up on the SD card and uh, we're just going to print these really quick. Now, I like to use a little bit of hairspray on the print bed just to make sure they all stick down, but if you know how to 3D print, this should pretty much be basic. Or if you just got a printer, you should understand you know, kind of the basics of how to do it. But we're going to let this print start up and then uh, wait two hours for these ears to come off and then continue working on them. just completed so the build plate's still hot. Luckily I have one of these peel off build plates. Now I kind of regret doing the uh, 0.3 millimeter layer height because it did have some uh, layer adhesion issues like uh, there but it won't bother me at all because they won't be recognized because I'm not going crazy painting these. So I'm just taking these off. There are hitchhiking ghosts and then we have, I can get it off there, I do, I did. And for some reason it's being flipped in the camera on my side, so I'm not sure if it actually looks like that. Alright, so time to assemble and finish these guys up. Alright, so the next piece is of course the headband. Now, I bought this $10 pack of headbands off of Amazon, a uh, link is in the description below. They are really, really nice, um, they're not really that cheap. The ones that the parks have, they have these really uncomfortable uh, headbands. And they're really weirdly shaped, even though they are for, supposed to be for adults and youth. But um, I'm using this as a reference. So what I'm going to do is place the headband inside of this. And obviously you don't need to have one of these. It just makes it useful. I've actually never tried this before. I've always just free kind of looked at it, eyed it. So what I'm going to do is just take this orange like crayon <laughs> and then just mark it on the sides where it needs to go. All right, this part is going to get a little bit messy, so have you know some cloth dyes, put down some paper towel. You're going to need some baking soda and some super glue. Now, this is the best method I found for gluing this down to the headband, and it's been an extremely, extremely durable hold. Now, what I'm going to do is, with a little bit of a paintbrush, I'm just going to brush some baking soda onto one side, like that, and I'm just going to put a little bit onto the plastic part there as well. Next step is, I'm just going to take my super glue, get a pretty decent bead of glue, I think that might be stuck on the top, super glue down, don't overdo it, but do enough that a little bit might come out the sides. So like that, I'm going to line it, I'm doing it just a little bit over that line because it was a little bit too close together, then I'm going to hold it shut really quick like that. Now this is probably strong enough. But since I'm going to be covering it up um, with some flowers later on, and I don't really care about how the outsides look, I'm actually going to reinforce this. So while this is actually stuck, I'm just going to take some baking soda and pour it right over the back there where it's seeping out. And yeah, it'll get really messy. But what this does is the baking soda is going to cause the super glue to harden extremely fast. And it, um, when it mixes with the baking soda, it almost creates like a cement. It's extremely durable. I'm going to try and get a little bit on the front there as well. 
because I see some sneaking out. And once you do that, you have an extremely durable hold that you have to clean up a little bit, but it's extremely durable. So I'm gonna do that with the other ear, and then we can get on to the rest of the work. All right, so I just rinsed the ears off, and as you can see, there's a little bit of residue from the super glue cement mixture, but they're extremely, extremely durable. They're not gonna break off, um, even if how, depending on how top heavy they are. So if you wanted to end it here, you could just do some black paint and clear coat the whole thing, but I am going to be adding a little bit of paint to these guys, and then some dark flowers on the rest of it to kind of create that really creepy Haunted Mansion vibe. I added just a little bit of green to the characters to make them look a little more haunted and a little, add a little bit of contrast between the two. You can really see how that writing came out really well. And you can see the work we did on the lettering. It's looking pretty awesome. Now to finish these ears up, I wanted to add uh, more of like a flower element, like my Tiki Room ones. And I had these purple, kind of whitish flowers that I just took and spray painted black. And I think I'm gonna add these around the ears to kind of create a, like, dilapidated flower look, kind of like the garden near the entrance to it. The final thing I'm doing is just taking a little bit of red paint on a paintbrush. And I'm just flicking it at these flowers to uh, kind of make it look like blood, I guess, which is a little bit intense for this. But um, hey, it's a great Halloween party one. tutorial it obviously went on a lot longer than I thought it would but I really wanted to get the basic print of, uh, principles kind of forward um, I think they came out pretty great especially for ones I wasn't really caring about I kind of just threw these together they actually look pretty cool I'm gonna redo them obviously with um, the glow-in-the-dark filament because I think that would look so cool but um I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, or if you have any particular questions about me making a specific pair of ears, you guys want to see a whole tutorial on it, please let me know in the do description down below, or in the comments down below. Feel free to subscribe and hit that button so you guys get notifications. Uh, please like this video, and I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.